Hello, and welcome to more nerdy rodent geekery. Swapping faces using the automatic 1111 web interface is now even easier, thanks to the Roop extension. It's simple to install and use, doesn't require any training, unlike with Dreambooth, you only need a single face image, and you don't need a monster PC either. Simply select the face you want to use, enable Roop, and then generate as normal to have your selected face swapped in automatically. Installation in Automatic 1111 is very easy. Just head on over to the Extensions tab, then over to Available, click Load From, and you should see the SD Web UI Roop there. If you just click on Install, it will take a few seconds, probably about 20 or 30, but then once this little processing thing has vanished, you can finally go over to the Installed tab and then click Apply and Restart UI. You will now have the Roop option available in both text-to-image and image-to-image -image as well. If you head on back to the Extensions tab over to Installed, you'll also see a URL for Roop, which you can click on to take you directly to the GitHub page. Here you can see some extra information. For example, users of Microsoft Windows will have an extra step. As you can see there, you'll need to download and install Microsoft Visual Studio first, making sure to include the Python and C++ packages. There's instructions on usage and also some tips as well so do be sure to check the GitHub page for all the very latest information. Alright, so time to use this thing. First of all, we need to be generating images with faces, as Roop will only swap faces. No, faces, you made that joke last time. Thank, thank you, right. Okay, if you try to do a face swap on something that isn't a face, then you're going to get an error. For example, here I've generated an image, I've got Roop enabled with a picture there, but his face isn't on it. Why not? Well, because back over here, no target found for face zero. Okay, so first let's generate our face and there it is. Now to have whatever face we want swapped in. So for this, you're gonna to have to go down to Roop, make sure you've expanded that section, select an image, and then also tick enable. Now, when I click the generate button, that face will be replaced with the one I put in the Roop section. There she is, nice and easy. All right, so what other options do we have in this Roop section? As you can see, by default, it is using Restore Face Codeformer Restore Visibility 1. So these are all things you can change here. There's also an upscaler, obviously whatever upscalers you've got installed. The upscaler scale goes all the way up to 8 by default and also the upscaler visibility. There is only one model, but perhaps there'll be some more in the future. Now, why does it restore faces by default? All right, let's take a look. So if we turn restore face off and then try to generate exactly the same thing, then as you can see, it's kept the original style a little bit better, but that face is unfortunately quite blurry. That can be fixed just a tiny little bit if you do use an upscaler. So for example, I'm gonna use a four times upscaler and let's upscale it a little bit and see what happens there. This time, as you can see, it's a little bit clearer, but we've got all these upscaling artifacts and stuff there. So for the most part, you are going to want to keep that restore face option on with either Codeformer or GFP GAN. If you want to change the face a little bit there, she's looking perhaps somber. Let's, let's add a grin. So all you need to do is just change your text prompt, have something in there like smile, grin, happy, whatever the expression is that you want, and then that will be reflected in the final image. It doesn't just have to be a single face either. If you provide a comma separated list down here, comma separated list of faces, so you could have zero, comma one, comma two, comma three, etc then you can replace each of those faces in the image. So there we've got an example image with three faces. So let's change all of those. Here I'll go down. So I'm gonna change number one and also number two as well. Make sure I've got this enabled. And this time when I generate, then you'll get a perfectly normal picture where everybody has the same face. One problem you might've already noticed is that because we're using face restoration, 
all of the faces come out fairly photorealistic. So here, if I enable Roop, I've got this sort of cartoony style face. And if I try to put that on, and we don't really want photorealism, then it comes out something like that. I don't know, maybe that's something you would like. Unfortunately, I've not found a good reliable way to actually do a Roop face swap that isn't realistic. So if you do know some tricks, then do feel free to let me know down in those comments. Still, it's a great way for making faces from old paintings and making them look like their photos. Plus, if you found that interesting, you may like this next Nerdy Rodent video.